Good morning. In 2011, I wrote a book called How to Steal from a Medical Practice and How to Prevent It. Embezzlement from medical practices is very common. A Google search of medical embezzlement yields over 700,000 hits. Consider the following news excerpts. She started by keeping some of the cash from the co-payments for herself and alternating information in the computer to make it look as if it was an insurance write-off. It got to the point where she was not recording any cash she received from these doctor's offices. A former medical worker pleaded not guilty Tuesday to stealing over $100,000 from her former employer. 62-year-old Ann Blah Blah worked as an office worker at Blah Blah Family Physicians for more than 10 years. Police said she stole money by altering paperwork to cover her actions. And police on Thursday charged a woman with stealing about almost $200,000 from a medical practice. Janet Sorry Thief was charged with embezzlement greater than $100,000. She was being held in county jail on a $50,000 bond. A physician with the practice asked the police last month to investigate money missing from the practice. Investigators determined that she used the business credit card and checks to amass nearly $200,000 in purchases over a five-year period. She was the business manager for the practice until she was fired in October. The unfortunate fact is that you really don't have to know as much about your employees as you think you do. This is particularly true when you hire someone. Even if you hire an all-star employee whose references and criminal background you've checked, you really never know who may change from a trusted employee into one who steals from your practice, perhaps due to changes in their personal circumstance. A desperate need for extra money coupled with an easy opportunity to steal is a temptation that many will find difficult to resist. This doesn't mean that checking out prospective employees is a total waste of time. When you are hiring someone who will work in the reception area or billing office or management, you need to be particularly careful and make a good effort to avoid hiring people who already have a criminal background. There are many online sources for background information. Only about 29% of employees caught stealing from their medical practice employer get prosecuted. Therefore, the majority of those caught will not have a record. And who can say how many are stealing still and just haven't been caught yet, much less prosecuted? These sorts of search sites that you can look in the internet may give information about convictions, but if there are no convictions, there won't be any records available to you. Reviewing a prior work history and looking for jobs left off the, the CV can be telling but it's been more difficult in recent years to find employers who are willing to give a bad reference about a, a former employee to a stranger. A clue might be a reference unwilling to give out more than the dates of hire and termination. How common is employee theft? The Medical Group Management Association released a survey in 2010 reporting that 83% of practice managers had been with a medical practice at some point that had experienced employee theft. The MGMA survey also said that 20% of the incidents involved losses of $100,000 or more. The survey estimated that only 29% of embezzlers were prosecuted, and surprisingly, only 83% lost their job. It's amazing to me that 17% of embezzlers were not only not prosecuted, they didn't even lose their job after being caught. Why is it so common? Famous bank robber Willie really Sutton was instructive. Why do I rob banks? because I enjoyed it. I loved it. I was more alive when I was inside a bank robbing it than at any other time of my life. I really enjoyed everything about it so much that one or two weeks later, I'd be out looking for the next job. But to me, the money was the chips, that's all. Go where the money is and go there often. This book is a means of understanding the problem of medical office embezzlement and understanding what measures you can take to try to prevent it. It covers everything from check-in to billing to management of the practice, use of company credit cards, use of company checking accounts, use of the trust between banks and your employees, employees doing things as simple as asking for checks with the pay to field blank and writing it out to themselves, destroying routers, because if a patient comes in and you lose the router and you lose the record of the visit, then any copay collected goes to that employee who's stealing from you and you don't even get to bill insurance because your books show that the visit never occurred from a financial standpoint, even if medical records were created. There are many ways that people scheme to take money from you. 
and this book is a start to help you understand what you can do about it. It's available on Amazon and various other outlets with the links listed below for the Amazon Kindle and paperback editions. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please hit the like button and hit subscribe. Everybody says that, but it's very important to improve the placement of these videos. Thank you.